Hi guys, this is Faye from Face World Media. I love producing this video and it's going to be a little bit different than some of the usual tech tutorials, Zoom, live stream videos. These days I have a lot more people coming to me asking how to improve their YouTube camera presence, whether it's for YouTube or for their courses. So I want this video to be conversational, more relaxed. So grab a tea or coffee, hit play and let's go. This video as an idea is prompted by my colleague, friend and new fellow uh, YouTuber named Penelope. So in response to her question, I realized a lot more people, including myself, can benefit from this information. The truth is that on YouTube, a lot of the talking about how to improve your video, your presence in general is also focused on equipment. But as you know, if you have watched more than one of my videos, I'm all about improving that over time. In fact, it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're just starting out or even within the first six months of your journey to have to think about what's the best camera. Let's get these three lenses. Let's get the lighting all right or perfect. So that's what I want to emphasize on. For the three areas I will be covering today are your camera presence, you know, how you look, how you speak, how you relax, how you connect with your audience. The second area, as I'm looking at my notes, uh, is all about your equipment. And that's about the camera, that microphone over there, lights, whether you have a professional lighting kit, a ring light, or you're relying much of your room light, uh, natural light, which position should you face, things like that you can really test out as you're preparing and improving your camera presence. Thirdly, it's about your environment. Now, there's certain environments you can control, some you cannot. So for instance, if you are at home, uh, it can be a little easier to control your environment, maybe take your dog out for a walk, maybe communicate with your family, spouse, children that this is something you're gonna be doing, recording for 40 minutes, an hour, whatever that may be. It's also better if you just build this uh, production calendar, whether it's frankly ideation, recording, uh, or editing into your everyday routine. It doesn't have to happen every day, but it's something that you might wanna plan ahead of time. So not only you start to learn about your routine, so will your family. <laughs> Learning how to, I just got a haircut by the way. That's why I keep training this piece of hair not to get into my face. The few things I must mention is number one, there's no one size that fits all. So I understand as I'm talking about this, whether it's my equipment, my approach, you may resonate with some of them, not all. Some of my fear, my concerns may not be yours. So just to keep that in mind. Number two, please don't wait until it's perfect. This video is not meant for you to hold back completely and say, okay, I'm not gonna do anything. I will never be on YouTube until I check all the boxes. I feel like I'm 11 out of 10 or I'm eight and a half out of 10 before I'm ready. Start recording. Trust me, most people don't like their first few videos, even their first 20 videos. You don't know because they don't tell you, right? So check out and sort all the videos on your favorite YouTube channel uh, channels by date. So some of the oldest videos are gonna look really funny and unlike the creator that you know today. And thirdly, I will say is that please love yourself as a creator, trust yourself, trust your instinct, um, learn from everyone, but follow no one. Your style will only be developed over time. That proficiency in front of the camera, the confidence knowing where to look, what to say without pauses. I still make plenty of mistakes after two and a half years at this point with a documentary before that. So I'm absolutely always work in progress and I expect myself to be this way, frankly, for the rest of my life. There's always something to improve. So be patient with yourself. With that said, let's talk about camera presence, how to be yourself, how to present. There are a few things, which is how to speak. There are a lot of people are using the camera, but not sure exactly where to look. So let me tell you a few things about it. I now use a flip camera, so I can literally see myself right now as I'm speaking. When I'm looking at myself, this is how I'm speaking. As if I'm talking to somebody else in the room, what I wanna look is at the camera lens. So if this is the camera lens, look at the top corner of it. What you can do as part of preparing for your camera presence, this is a great practice. Sometimes it takes more than once, right? Um, it takes training. We have the tendency to look at ourselves and also other people. If there's another person helping you out in the room, you might have the tendency to look at him or her. So practice on your own. Look at the top of your camera, find that sweet spot. 
And trust me, it feels so strange at the beginning, but it's gonna get easier over time. This camera lens with nobody standing behind it, it's gonna be your audience to talk to. Whether it's one person you're talking to at a time, or these 1,000, 10,000 people who will eventually watch your video. So that's who you're talking to. Be yourself, be connected. Think about what makes someone so, uh, you know, charming, connected, uh, mesmerizing, uh, whatever that may be, right? You're connecting with that person. When you sit down with someone and when they lean in and they're paying attention, they're making eye contact that makes you feel so much more at home, at ease. So depending on the nature of your video, but in general, that is a very important technique. Now, how you speak fast or slow, I know that's hard to change. And you know, English is my second language. When I look at my videos, I am talking pretty fast because that is something that YouTube will prefer that I don't drag on, I make my points and I write down a script. But in general, I still find uh, my way of speaking it's a little bit slower than some of the, definitely the popular YouTubers where they're just, you know, uh, Ali Abdal. So in this video, we're gonna go through my four step method with eight tips that have helped me to learn from audiobooks more efficiently. Part one, listening to books versus reading books. But he makes it super engaging. He's very well prepared uh, and I love his content. But in general, just be at a pace that you're comfortable with. I'm not asking you to speed up, to drive so much energy. Uh, just to be YouTube popular. Uh, what you might wanna do with your tone is just get a little more excited uh, and even at your own pace, you know, get a little more energetic. And also here's a free tip, smile. So sometimes at the beginning, I find myself talking my video and I'm just talking and um, you know, like even on my regular pace, I'm very engaged emotionally, but sometimes it doesn't show on my face. Here I am, I'm just smiling a little bit. I know it's a little tiring if you have to do this for like 30 minutes for your video, but just smile a little bit. You're gonna notice that, right? You could have other emotions, don't get me wrong. You may be looking down thinking, you may be you know, transitioning uh, from one segment to another. You're allowed to have emotions, but in general, upping that energy and just a little bit of smile goes a long way. Gestures, a lot of people are, this is a kind of a debatable element. Uh, how much should you gesture? Are you moving your arms too much, too little? So I notice when I hold on to a script, sometimes, you know, I don't have a teleprompter or anything here. So um, I sometimes just write my notes literally in the notes app. And every once in a while I have to look down. Sometimes I like to hold it in my hand and I don't want to show it necessarily on the camera. So sometimes it's a little weird when just one of my arms uh, is moving. So I try to switch and move the other arm. In general, gesturing is a really good thing for you to say, focus on here versus there. I've taken pretty minimal amount of public speaking uh, classes, but in general, trying to be a little more activated, energized, it's okay to use your hand to point, you know, one on one hand, on the other, or point here, oh, let's get started. You know, play with your hands, your gestures, um, and those are absolutely encouraged. And what I would say that sometimes it gets to be too much, there are people who are like moving their hands all the time. You can see that this is very distracting. And this was a style of YouTube as well, like eight, 10 years ago, I found it distracting. And some people even say that I'm moving, moving my hands too much. Ultimately, you cannot satisfy everyone, but find cues that are helpful uh, when you're genuinely looking back at your video to say, okay, that seems to work pretty well. And let me ch change it up a little bit over here. Again, this takes time and you might become a slightly different creator six months, a year down the road. So allow yourself to try new styles and pick up new things. Finally, I wanna talk about how to relax. This part is something that people don't talk about. And you may be thinking, oh, what do you mean relax? So I would say that recording can take longer than you initially anticipated. So even if this video, for instance, ends up to be 12 minutes, 20 minutes, there's actually a lot more going on behind the scenes. You may have to start and stop or whatever. So I recommend as a uh, recording routine, allow yourself to take breaks. Sometimes I even just go on you know, just thinking for two, three seconds. So that silence is actually not a bad thing for you to number one, gather your thoughts again. Number two, making editing and cutting more easily because in post-production, whether it's Final Cut Pro, we're using my favorite cleanup tool called ReCut. I'm able to cut out those silences uh, and then go into post-production and know where to pick that up. That's number one, like how to take breaks during your recording. Number two is actually take a break. 
you're very much allowed to say, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna pause this, I recorded two videos, today is my recording day, I'm very proud of it, but I need to record two more. Take a walk, uh, even just pacing inside the house, doing some of the yoga stretches, uh, get yourself a cup of tea, or even uh, you'll notice that your throat and in general, there is a lot of talking going on. It might get a little dried up here. Make sure you sip some water and also using one of those mint lemon drops can actually go a long way. Those are the tricks I learned as a podcaster, as a broadcaster over the years is to condition yourself for the long run. Let's move on to the next thing, which is how to test your equipment. There are obviously a lot of equipments you might end up learning purchasing over time, but the general ones are obviously your camera, your microphone, your lights, natural lights, or you know artificial lights. It's important to test it out. As I am testing out the camera, what I don't want to do is learning it as I'm recording series of videos. Because guess what? If something goes wrong, you know it will cost you time, the editor's time. For me to learn to play with this particular camera, I have a separate video to explain or talk about all that. This is a Sony 6400 mirrorless camera, and um, I like it super easy, almost like one of those dummy cameras. I turn it on. Sometimes when I turn it on, it has a soft focus. I can see the box not following me or simply focusing on something behind me. I wanna get that fixed right away. So what I also believe in is a checklist, right? Just like my little script here, it's a checklist. When you start your YouTube journey, even later on, like today, I still have my little checklist. Remember to look into the camera, you know, have some sort of spatial awareness, how you move. You don't want to accidentally move outside of the frame, for instance, or sometimes instead of being dead center, if you want to show something on the screen, you might be stepping, you know, a little bit to the side so that you can use this area uh, easily to repurpose, you know, for other slides, bullet points. There are obviously ways to do that during post-production as well, but I'm always thinking about how to make that easier. So at this point, I know I mentioned a lot of things and it helps to watch this particular video possibly more than once and improve one thing at a time. Again, I just want to remind everybody, you can't be perfect in every video. You cannot be remembering doing all 15, 20 things right at once. But part of this is about muscle memory, right? And setting an environment that's easy to access. That's one thing about camera. Now, microphones. Microphones have very different usage, whether you're indoor or outdoor. Uh, one thing I like to test as a bare minimum is that a lot of these microphones are built and by default, meaning the default setting is running pretty hot, which means it's picking up a lot of sound, even the background noise. Those things can actually be set in your camera a lot of the times and sometimes can even be set on the device itself. So read the manual, understand how to use your microphone, check your level, you record these samples, right? Turn on your camera, plug in your microphone, record these three to five very short clips, maybe just one minute at a time, plug them in to your computer, ask your editor or on your own, figure out, wow, I'm running really hot. Uh, even without editing the tracks, so it's just really loud. I can hear a lot of the background noise. In some cases, maybe too quiet, right? You're recording, your voice is coming in really, really low. Um, so on one hand, that could eliminate some of the background sound, but you want to be somewhere in the middle and have that partner. Guys, this whole journey I haven't talked about because I'm really not here to sell you anything. But the best thing that I have done along the way is to find someone that I trust, I love, I respect to be my partner. And for me, that is Herman, my editor, who's been with me since 2016. So um, I encourage you to look into options, find another YouTuber, someone who's maybe a few steps ahead of you, maybe a couple of years into their YouTube career, and have these regular check-ins, you know, once a week, every other week, find a pace that's, uh, that's right for you, finding the right partner. So I probably should schedule uh, or record a separate video for that about, uh, you know, more quickly on what makes a good partner. Someone who encourages you, doesn't necessarily agree with everything you do. It's not a love, you know, fest or love parade, but someone who should make you feel energized, eager to uh, improve or to even continue doing some of the things that you're doing really well. That is key. You should not find a partner who is you feel so beat down by that feedback. You feel like they're just volume of feedback because not everybody, not every partner, not every creator knows how to give feedback. 
I think those are the most invaluable lessons I learned from Seth Godin's uh, Elton BA. But it takes practice, takes skills, takes some of that is coaching skills. So just to keep that in mind, uh, it may take more than one shot to find the right partner. Um, so with that said, let's move on to lighting. Lighting is a tricky thing. And as you can see right now, I bought a, this is a blackout curtain. Let me show you what happens if I open it up. Let me step back into the spotlight. My camera is trying to focus on me, trying to decide the, you know, the lights. It's, it is very light sensitive. And it just noticed that right behind me, there is a lot of natural light inside the room. And it's having trouble deciding, like I appear more dim at this point, just, just too much light behind me. I don't know how to put up uh, the curtains myself. So I hire someone to do this and it really makes a huge difference. I have another window right there as you can see, and that window, it's not curtain up at this point. I think that's okay. That just gives me some filler light on this side, but I'm gonna close the curtain now. You will see that uh, I'm gonna pop even more in this video. That's it, right? So I pop even more. It is not overwhelming behind me. These things are all part of the test, right? Um, and you will really find your way. Some people will even say it's a style thing. What I have been striving for, speaking of branding, right? Like the way that you approach your videos most importantly, I think it's your video presence. And secondly, as you grow over time, you can really tune up or down or change, modify your light, you know, your lighting kit, your lighting in general, your camera, which lens you choose, all the intricacies uh, that you'll end up learning over time. But I don't think this is as important as developing your personality, your style, your branding on YouTube over time. Uh, my branding, for instance, is about being in a very natural environment. This is my office. I try to keep it clean. I'm not necessarily the most organized person. Um, I try to keep a clean background. For some of you guys, don't let it intimidate you. You may be living in a household where it's gonna be hard to clean up a spot, where maybe that's the only spot you can clean up, pushing things out of the way, and that's okay. You know, I know a lot of YouTubers started off in their basement, literally, and with backgrounds that they didn't really like, uh, buying green screens, trying to fix these things. And just, you know, again, don't overthink it. The last thing I will say is how will your equipments perform indoors versus outdoors? If you're a fitness instructor, for instance, uh, your environment means a lot to you. Let me break it down. There's certain Zumba, uh, personal fitness instructors, you know, who will need a space where they're allowed to move around. And as they're doing that, they want to be heard clearly. So that in itself could create some complications or some advanced settings, not so advanced any anymore um, once you are familiar with that. So I recommend that if you're an instructor, consider getting something like a Rode, a Go mic, something you can clip on your shirt. Also for people with longer hair, you might wanna pull your hair back because you don't want your hair to be brushing against the microphone. All these things you're gonna discover during test. Another um, environmental issues to uh, consider is once you decide to move your shooting outside, whether it's by yourself or with a class of people, then you want an environment that's relatively controlled, which means that there are not going to be sirens going off. Uh, you know, it's it's a place where, especially it's public, you know, people are going to be walking in, in and out of the frame and, and things like that could be problematic, right? So you want to find a place that's relatively quiet, uh, uninterrupted, and to a certain degree, and practice. I always have a backup option as well. So when I shoot content outside, which doesn't happen all the time, and if I'm inviting someone, I always wanna make sure that, you know, number one, you wanna understand the licensing issues. As it turned out, you can't just go shoot uh, YouTube videos or videos in general in any public place uh, without, um, without a license, without permission or a permit. And that's one thing. So once you have that, make sure that it's an environment you're familiar with, you have some control over. And it's not super echoey, it's not super loud. Um, once you're indoor, by the way, that can be controlled much better. And if you're hopping around, unlike me standing in the same place, and just practice uh, you know, in your environment, make sure that Number one, you're familiar with the moves that you're going through. I don't want to you know, see anybody tripping over certain things. It's just much harder as you're demonstrating something. Um, and 
clean up your environment. Like I mentioned earlier, just nothing, you know, there's no trash can uh, right behind you. That makes editing a little trickier. Um, but that's it. That's in general is indoor and outdoor into two categories. If you need both, make sure you test out both. The final key points before this video get super long is the fact that there are a lot of things you're going to end up learning about yourself. Everything we talked about so far is about helping you become not just a better YouTuber, but also a more proficient, a more effective YouTuber. Being a content creator is not about only creating content when you feel and look your best, you know, and it's about trusting the process and do it regardless, even on days when you're not feeling your best. Um, you want to push yourself sometimes, not all the time, not over the edge, right? Burnout, no good. I don't believe in burnout. Uh, as in, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I think you should stop short of that and create an environment and, um, you know, finding a partner that makes you feel good about this journey and doing it for the long haul. And um, so one thing you're gonna end up learning about yourself is how long it actually takes. For me, I lead a pretty busy life. I am my mom's caregiver. So I have my camera set right here. I have an outlet right next to the camera and my camera is charged at all times. So I'm not one of those who, you know, who brings or pre-charge these five battery packs. Um, so instead it just plugged into the outlet. Um, I will include a link in the description below. And I also have a set in, you know, with a certain angle. Sometimes I will sit down, you know, next to my desk and, and sort of talk about it that way. Sometimes I prefer standing up, but I create an environment where this is very fluid. I don't have to, you know, move 10 things out of the way or rearrange everything in order to hit record. I want to be able to hit record at any given moment. I also learn about the regular speed of how I'm recording things. So like, for instance, if you know your video is relatively eight minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes, it doesn't take exactly those minutes to record a video. And what most people don't realize is that instead of beating yourself up during the first round of recording, you can do it more than once, right? So for me at this point, I'm okay with a lot of first takes, but when I'm really struggling, when I feel like I'm learning as I'm recording during the first round, I welcome myself to do a second take. Second take often takes so much less time, right? Like you're struggling, just, you know, sometimes allow yourself, you finish your first take, finish it, and then give yourself, uh, you know, the liberty to do a second take, sometimes even the third one. Don't just keep going and say, gonna be better, I need a better eighth, 10th, that's not what I'm saying. I think there's a lot of benefits to taking a second or a third take. So learn more about yourself and so much love to this community and thank you for spending the time with me. Please let me know if you find any of the tips helpful, and what you have practiced over time, what you have shared with others. I'm all ears and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.